I'm standing on the bank of the River Sambre in northern France to commemorate an incredible act of bravery a century ago. The peaceful scene today could hardly be in greater contrast to that of November the 6th, 1918. Just five days before the armistice, Major Brett Cloutman risked his life under heavy fire to take part in what was to become the last VC action of the Great War. Brett Mackay Cloutman was born in Muswell Hill, North London, on November the 7th, 1891. He was the youngest of three sons of Alfred Cloutman, the director of a furniture company, and his wife Jane. Shortly after the outbreak of the First World War in August 1914, he was enlisted in the 12th Battalion London Regiment. On March 10, 1915, he was commissioned into the Kent Fortress, part of the Royal Engineers, and on July 2, he was promoted to acting captain. During the war, Cloutman saw action at several of the major battles, notably Vimy Ridge, France and Passchendaele, Belgium. In December 1917, he was moved to Italy with 59 Field Company, where he spent the winter with the Italian army. In the spring of 1918, he returned to the Western Front. In August, after the Battle of Amiens, he took part in the advance from the Somme to the Sambre. Six weeks before the end of the war, he participated in an action for which he was later awarded the Military Cross. Under heavy machine gun fire, he made a reconnaissance on foot in order to assess the possibility of bridging a key canal. By early November 1918, the Allies were seemingly closing in on victory after well over four years of war. On the night of November 5th-6th, the Third Army established a bridgehead across the River Sambre. As no artillery had yet crossed the river, it was important to secure Cartre Bridge on which I'm standing. It was a single span crossing on stone abutments, while close by was a cottage, a lock, and another building. Cloutman realized that with the Germans in retreat, they were preparing to blow up Cartre Bridge, and he wanted to prevent its destruction. The citation for his Victoria Cross reads, Major Cloutman, after reconnoitring the river crossings, found the Cartra Bridge almost intact, but prepared for demolition. Leaving his party under cover, he went forward alone, swam across the river, and having cut the leads from the charges, returned the same way, despite the fact that the bridge and all approaches thereto were swept by enemy shells and machine gun fire at close range. Although the bridge was blown up later in the day by other means, the abutments remained intact. The enemy soldiers concealed along the river bank had concentrated their machine gun fire on the section of the river where they knew Cloutman had to return. Despite the fierce enemy fire, he had escaped death just five days before the end of hostilities. After the war, Cloutman returned to work at his father's furniture business but he later took up law and joined Gray's in London before being called to the bar in 1926. By then, he was married with two daughters. Cloutman served during the Second World War, again with the Royal Engineers, when he received a mention in dispatches for courage in the Middle East. He retired in the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. In 1957, he became a judge and was knighted, in 1970, Cloutman gifted his gallantry and service medals to the Royal Engineers. Lieutenant Colonel Sir Brett Cloutman, VC, MC, died at his home in North London on August the 15th, 1971, aged 79. Here in Norfolk Cemetery on the Somme battlefield, his ashes were placed on the grave of his elder brother, Lieutenant Walfred Cloutman, who also served with the Royal Engineers during the Great War. Walfred died from poison gas after attempting to rescue a sergeant who was trapped in a mine. Perhaps there really is a bravery gene, because these two brothers were both incredibly courageous. In total, the Victoria Cross was awarded 628 times during the 1914-18 war. 
but it was Brett Cloutman who will always be remembered for performing the very last VC action of the Great War and for joining that splendid group of servicemen who deserve to be described as the bravest of the brave.